Hey team, this is a visual understanding of how referrals actually happen most often in a chiropractic practice so you can focus on what increases them and lay off energy on what actually doesn't. So let's get started. First off, this is how it's traditionally been taught and how DCs thinks it works. So this is you, this is DC, this is your current patient, and this is a potential referral. Now there's three ways chiropractors are taught how to get referrals and all of them pretty much drain energy, sometimes sabotage, and don't work as well as what I'm going to show you over here. So the first is asking. It could be three card Mondays. It could be whatever it is, asking, asking, asking. Sometimes you might feel needy asking. Sometimes you feel it's not appropriate. Sometimes you're badgering them. Either way, asking is one way. Results, meaning you get great results. No doubt about it. You wouldn't be in existence. Chiropractic wouldn't exist if it didn't get great results. And we think and we expect, oh, because this person had a life-changing result or just got back to their life, they should obviously refer their family, friends, and anyone they know in need. But we both know that some of your absolute best case studies and results are the ones who disappear on you. Didn't tell us all what happened there. Next is incentives. Incentives is, hey, do, you know, refer this week and you're, you're put in a raffle for a toaster or a grill or a new car or whatever it is. Essentially, it's you do this for us, we'll do this for you. Another common one. So here's what happens. Those are the three most common ways chiros are taught or think referrals happen, but how it's actually coming off to the patient. So first, asking. That bothers patients. Now, of course, it depends how you do it. There's a way to ask for referrals, and I'm not saying never ask, but you got to do it correctly, and you can't bank on that being their primary source. What happens when you ask is someone's going to refer whether or not you ask. Think about a restaurant you've recently referred someone to, a movie, a book. First, did anyone from the movie theater, the book company, or the restaurant ask you to refer? No. If they had, would it made of any difference to you? No. You're referring because you want that person to have that experience, regardless of if anyone asked. It's the same thing with a chiropractic practice. You asking may stimulate their, their memory if you do it in the right way, but it's really not the reason they refer. Second is results. The reason results don't inherently lead to referrals is because results are expected. No one comes to you thinking, eh, Maybe it'll work. Let me just spend money and time and energy come in and we'll see 50-50 or I hope I get 20% difference. No. People, the ones who show up, the people who show up into your practice are there because they are expecting the outcomes you are letting them know they expect, promising, they've heard their family members get, friends, whatever it is. People don't refer based on expectations being met. Really big one and results are expected, even if they're dramatic. And incentives, literally, it's pretty indifferent to most people. Um, incentives are oftentimes really great to be used for writing reviews, like having a review raffle, but referrals, think about it from your patient standpoint. I'm told I get a $100 gift card to a local restaurant for referring, let's just say. I refer my friend Johnny in. Now he comes in and he's told on his first, second, or third visit, if you refer someone, you get a $100 gift card. Immediately, what is Johnny thinking? Huh, I wonder if my friend referred me because of the gift card or because he really, really respects this place, likes the doctor, and believes I can get results. So see what's happening on the front end, you're stimulating potentially, but on the back end, you're causing doubt and sabotage. You got to really, really be careful about that. So be careful how you do incentives and incentives are great for uh, writing reviews. So what happens in this model? The current patient is not influenced or more enthusiastic to tell a potential referral. And if they don't tell a potential referral, obviously that referral is not coming to you. This is how it's always been taught and always been thought of, well, this is what I should do by chiropractors. Now let's see what actually works. You're the DC, you've got a current patient, and you've got a potential referral, and it's going to be a referral now. Instead of which one should we do on Monday, which one should we do on Tuesday and Wednesday, there is one focus, and that is you delivering an incredible patient experience, starting from the phone call, starting even from your website. Is your website making them feel reassured, optimistic, 
you're the leader, that first phone call, and then of course, the six question consult, the five step recommendations, giving them fees and care protocol that a five year old can understand, looks professional, and exemplifies you being the go to doctor in the community with leadership, trust, instilling hope and optimism. When you deliver that, that's what has a current patient. Now, by the way, whoop. When you deliver this, did they get any results? No, or not yet. It has nothing to do with results. Was there any incentive? No. And did you ever ask for a referral? You didn't need to. When you're just doing that, your current patient wants to tell someone else that they actually care about because they want that person to have that experience with you. Just like when you refer to a movie or a great restaurant, you had an emotional experience You want to tell someone else because you actually care. You want them to have an emotional experience, but that's the top layer of the onion. The real reason is because you want credit for being the cause, being the impotence, being the refer to them having that amazing optimistic experience. And what it really comes down to the deeper level of the onion uh, psychologically is you want credit and you want admiration from your friend, from your family member, from your coworker that you were the reason their headaches aren't there anymore, that their sciatic isn't there, their low back pain, that their child you know, can breathe and sleep through the night. You're the reason, even though you didn't put your hands on them, you didn't actually do the service, you were the reason they found it. And when you tap in to that inherent human psychological need, it's all being done because you're giving a wow experience that is unlike any other doc they've ever been to from a place of trust and caring and leadership and instilling optimism and hope. That's when people talk about you. And that is when a referral says, wow, this person's so enthusiastic about it. I got to check this out. There's something unique here. That's when they come in with trust and intrigue of like, what is it about this doc that has, has my friend raving? I got to go see him or her. This model is how to do it. This is the patient mastery model. Is there still a place for asking in the right way? Yes, but it doesn't have to be planned and robotic. Is there still an expectation that you get amazing results? Absolutely. And you don't need to do incentives for patient referrals. Save those for reviews, save those you know, patient appreciation, I don't even know. But don't worry about this, focus on this, and that is how you can intentionally engineer with you and your team referrals going up for the right reasons without sabotage on the back end. I'm excited for you, you got this, you need anything, we're right here.